long as I've been in a client room without a clonic. Right. <laughs> What is up, my friends? Welcome back to another podcast. My name is Mike Perrine. This is the Everyday Detox Podcast. You know, there's something I never ask anyone to do, and it would help this podcast so much. I never ask anybody to like and comment on YouTube, and I never ask anybody to go to iTunes and leave us a review uh, and a rating. So if you get any value from this podcast, it would help us out so much to do that. Uh, I notice a lot of podcasters ask people to do that. And it's one of the ways that podcasts get ranked and get attention and get prioritized as suggestions. And I never ask anybody to do that. Um, so if you've ever gotten any value from this podcast, even if it's one or two sentences, if you wouldn't mind just drop, going over to iTunes, going over to YouTube, leaving a comment, liking, subscribing, uh, subscribing to the podcast on iTunes and just doing things uh, that are going to help bring this podcast to more people. Uh, also, to support this podcast, please visit us at rootsandskyclothing.com. That's one of my little side projects. I'm wearing one of the t-shirts right now. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, you can see it. And uh, we have a variety of podcast t-shirts, but we also have t-shirts that celebrate plant-based living. We have a new one that we just released. Uh, it's called Plants Heal the World. And you know plants heal the world, so you should let everybody know. You should pick up one of those t-shirts and help support this podcast. Uh, our Black Friday and Cyber Monday sale went so incredibly well that uh, we're going to be doing a Christmas and... Uh, New Year's sale as well for Roots and Sky Clothing. Uh, so definitely you can follow us at Roots and Sky Clothing on Instagram to find out. But even at the moment uh, that this podcast is released, the shopping cart has been updated with all uh, holiday discounts. So if you visit us there now, uh, you'll definitely get a savings before the new year. Speaking of plants healing the world, you know, I was thinking about something the other day when I was doing the dishes. And I was thinking of, uh, you know, I was looking at one of my friends' restaurants on Instagram, and there's, there's, a, there's a big awakening into food culture, especially like plant-based food culture and organic food culture. And uh, yeah, I, the word farm-driven is, um, is thrown around a lot, plus a lot of other kind of weird new terms about our connection to farmers and the earth. And like, I worked at a restaurant called Angelica Kitchen, which awakened my awareness uh, into uh, organics and being connected to the earth and the farmers and the food supply, you know, back in the 90s and early 2000s. Um, but it's kind of reached a new level and a new peak. And I just, I was thinking of this word farm driven. And it's a very cool concept, of course. But I was thinking like how, like it, it really what it illustrates, like it almost has a ridiculousness to it. Like when I hear the descriptions of some of these restaurants, it's almost like a Saturday Night Live skit. It's like a parody of itself because I, it's so hungry. Like, the, like now, don't get me wrong. These chefs and restaurant owners are visionary people that are are so connected to the earth. But the hunger to be connected to the earth is like so overwhelming right now that it's almost it's almost comical. And I was thinking of the term farm driven, and I was like, you know, it's so it, it really reflects how disconnected we are. I mean, it, it's almost like stating the obvious. Like, if a restaurant's not farm driven, then what the fuck is it? Like, where's the food coming from? Unless it's like a specialty place where like okay maybe it's a, a forage uh based a forage um conceptual restaurant or something where all the food is foraged or something like that okay yeah, i get the specialty in that but for 99 percent of all food that gets produced in restaurants and in products like it should be farm driven that should be like a given you know like where the fuck else is our food coming from and it's coming from factories and a lot of the places and, and big um big agricultural um, manufacturing plants, not really, I wouldn't even really call them farms. I mean, they're just pumping things out. And I don't know, I just kind of like thinking about that and thinking about how uh, important slash silly it is that we have to differentiate our food concept or our food culture as something that's farm driven or connected to the earth in some way, because that, that's all it is. That's all it ever should be. That's all it ever was uh, until we changed it and we fucked everything up. So anyway, I'm not trying to get negative on that. I don't know how why I brought that up, but I was just thinking about it the other day. So um, other big news. Uh, 
there's been all of these like monthly and um, and holiday sale discounts for higher dose infrared wraps, which are our sponsor of this podcast, and they just gave me a permanent discount code code code. I don't know where that came from. Uh, permanent discount code of every day 100 for 100 dollars off and that code does not expire so um you don't have to worry about uh you know it ending in november you don't have to worry about being a black friday deal or a christmas deal uh it's one it's the biggest discount i've ever seen them give uh, they've done everything everything from 50 to 75 to 100 and this is 100 dollars off their infrared wrap uh, if you want to see a review that i did of the infrared wrap uh, you can go to my Instagram page at Everyday Detox, and it's in the saved stories. Uh, I missed a whole bunch of Q&A saved stories, too. So if you're into the Q&As on Instagram, you can check those out. But uh, the infrared wrap, it's really good. You know, I, um, I wasn't feeling well a few weeks ago, and I literally just laid in the infrared wrap for hours at a time, not on the highest setting. I did that for an hour or two, but then like I would just leave it on a nice warm. I, it, it's, it's almost like a wonderful therapeutic heating blanket. Like I really enjoy it. I really like it. Uh, so uh, you can check out my review, $100 off every day, 100. There's a link below uh, in the description. Uh, so you can check that out there. Speaking of sales, Vitality, New York City. When you're in New York, please pay us a visit at Vitality. Uh, our Black Friday and um, and Cyber Monday sales went so incredibly well. We are also doing sales once again uh, for the Christmas holiday and for New Year's especially because as we know, it's a new year, it's a new me. It's our busiest season, almost like people with gym memberships, right? Like everybody just fucked up for like the last two months during the holidays and they feel gross and they're coming in for treatments and doing cleanses and they are uh, doing saunas and cryotherapy and they're getting into the gym and they haven't worked out for months. So they're injuring themselves and they're coming in for cryo sessions to reduce the inflammation. So our prices are actually going up in the middle of January and uh, we're having one of the biggest sales at the end of the year. So uh, please visit us at vitalitynewyorkcity.com and follow us at vitalitynyc on Instagram to know when this sale launches. Uh, Speaking of vitality, this podcast was done in the treatment room. So I sit down with Nicole Berry and uh, she's no stranger to the colonic world. So uh, I had asked Gil, who knows her very well. I said, Gil, uh, you know, I have to do this podcast. Nicole only has time during business hours and the studio is so loud between the music and the talking and running the cryo sauna and it's just a loud place. Um, so I said, I can do it in the treatment room, which is a very quiet place. I said, is she going to be okay hanging out in a colonic room doing it? And he was like, oh, yeah, without a doubt. Nicole's she's hardcore. She's all in on the cleansing life. I said, thank God. So we do this tre- this this um, podcast in the treatment room. Thank you, Nicole, for being such a good sport. Uh, I did use a new mic, and we did do it during business hours. So uh, there's humming of the cryo sauna. There might be some background echo voices going on and you know, there's some little thumps and bumps and all sorts of little things in the background. So my apologies for the, uh, for the lack of clean, clean sound that you may be used to during a normal podcast. And I'm not sure if anybody hears that right now, but, uh, there's a train going by my house here in Oregon honking its horn. Uh, so anyway, I sit with Nicole and, uh, she is a, uh, she's a blogger. She's a fantastic Instagrammer, and she is a shop owner and owns uh, Bonbury on Bleecker uh, down in the West Village. It's a beautiful shop. Two podcasts from now, or maybe it's three podcasts from now. I actually did a talk there on this trip to New York. Uh, it was a it was a live Q and A session, and I'm probably going to be releasing that as a podcast. So that will be coming up on the way. Uh, and uh, the great thing about Nicole, she's an emissary of the cleansing life for many. Uh, for many women out there that are trying to find balance and uh, in the knowledge that a lot of our choices don't serve us very well and the world's a very toxic place and how to not drive yourself crazy while uh, trying to achieve self-care. So uh, we get deep into that conversation and uh, it's a really good one. We talk about spirituality. We talk about self-care uh, without waging a war against your own body. Uh, it's it's really special. I was really happy to sit with her. We had a great talk the next night at her um, bodega, Bon on Bleecker. And uh, I think you guys are really going to like this. So let's jump right in. Like, so we're at Vitality now. It's 
We're it's actually, beautiful. It's like the Taj Mahal. Of yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> I've never seen a clown room like this ever. I like I like to go big. You know, no, yeah. I just I wanted something. I wanted something that wasn't gonna like freak my mom out if she came to the Fair studio. Enough. I wanted something super hygienic, super yep. tight. You know, mm-hmm. um, yeah, it's beautiful. And also, I tend to do a lot of stuff on <clears throat> YouTube, Instagram, mm-hmm. so my space had to look tight. So Visual. thank you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, it's great. It's but. My first studio I ever owned, I owned with Gil. Mm -hmm. And like, we'd work out of apartments all the time and stuff. And like, I always wonder like what the neighbors thought was going on (laughs) in these places. I I can only imagine. Yeah, people just coming in and out all day. And we don't necessarily, like they they would see us on the regular. We don't necessarily look weird or anything like that, right? So they're probably like, what the hell goes on? Some sort of therapy of sorts, but it's New York. You know, they probably didn't care. (laughs) The first place we ever worked together was the Rivergate building. And uh, where was that? 30, 34, 32nd or yeah. 34th, I that's, forget. That's where on I... On first. Yeah. On Rivergate. That was the one. Yeah, that's the yeah, one. Okay, was, so was I, the, was, it was like a cul-de-sac in the entrance of the building? Yeah. Yeah, I think was so. It? Yeah. I believe yeah. so. And, uh, Near the Kips Bay movie, movie yes, theater. Yes, that yeah, was yeah. exactly yeah, it, yeah. right? Like, kind of like below the UN. Yeah. Right? So we used to work there. And I at first, I, like <clears> the, bi- the building came once and they like knocked on the door and I was like, Gil, the building's here. Are we allowed to be working in here? And he's like, don't worry about it. He's like, this building is full of drug dealers and happy ending massage places. I was like, really? Yeah. Oh, and it was like, yeah. Wow. It's like it was. So they, yeah. he's like, they don't care about people doing enemas. Yeah. Right. Exactly. <laughs> and they totally didn't Shout care. Shout out they, to they, Rivergate. Yeah. They, <laughs> they thought we were, uh, they thought we were adorable probably oh by gosh. those standards. Yeah. But yeah, it was great. Those were the days. But yeah, so, so my first colonic was that experience kind of like an eye-opening like clarifying I don't know afterwards I'm just flying surprisingly it was uncomfortable like during my first treatment because I had never done that kind of work before um but afterwards I just I've never felt that type of clarity um and I think I just got hooked I remember like texting my mom like you need to come here David my brother needs to come here like you know like everyone needs to come here now you know and 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 so like you were saying it's either for you or not for you. And I think, you know, very much it's one of those, like, I don't know, physiological, like, changes that you feel. You either feel it or you don't. If you don't, that's not a bad thing. It's just not for you. You know, there's plenty of other modalities that could be for you. Um, this particular one was for me. You know? yeah. yeah. I brought my family, too. Yeah. You know, you're like, it's like being a Well, you, you kind of, like, want to, you're like, I need to save everybody at first, you know? And then you realize it's like, okay, not everybody wants to be saved, and that's okay, you know? And it's, you're, it's, you're, it's probably better off that way. But um, I've learned over the years to kind of, instead of being like, you need to do this, it's better just to stay silent, live your life. And if they, if someone sees what your energy is like or how you have, changed and wants a little part of that then they probably will ask you so for me I just let people ask and I think I've actually learned that from Gil a lot not to be preachy not to you know um if they kind of ask or hint at like curiosity then I'm I'm happy to share but I'm I'm never like you should do this you know because I do it so I always, I always take that approach. Like I'm like, where if I'm, if I make my lifestyle just look cool as shit, and I don't care if other people do it, everybody wants to do it. Yeah. Yeah. My yeah. first high school reunion, they made fun of me <laughs> in a friendly way because like we're all friends. Second high school reunion, they all made appointments. Yeah. It was like, yeah, yeah they see you. That it's like everyone's like aging. You're probably, you know, it's the, it's, you know. Yeah. The I proof get, is in the pudding. I get hit up with people all the time. Mike, I need a colonic, and I'm like. From your high school. That. Yeah, I'm like, that's I've seen awesome. this dude for 20 years. But that's so cool, isn't it? Yeah, it's yeah, very, it's I very love cool. It. Okay, we're back. I had to fix the yes. camera real quick. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, on this trip to New York, I set myself up with, I basically, I'm like 150% capacity with my meetings right. and everything like totally. that. So, I had planned on coming down to Bleecker Street yes. to see your shop. And I was yeah. like, I'm going to go down there. I'm going to go down on Saturday. Two six staff members later, I never had any free time. Yeah. So what's I, I'm very excited. I'm going to see it Wednesday. We're doing a yes. Q and A tomorrow I'm so night. Excited for that too. Um, we basically have a full house, which you just told me, which you know, is 55 really fifty five people. Which is really just exciting. on RCP, and people are going to show up too. So yeah, it's going to yeah. be. I'm, you could fit that many people. Yeah, we fit over a hundred people. Yeah, we have set, like sometimes we how? have like Instagram influencers. We've had over two hundred people. How people, big? They watch on the street. Like through the window with no sound. Who sh- what Instagram person <gasps> shows up that everybody's watching on the street? Uh, quite a few, I will say. 
Wow. I so know. wait, so tell me something though. What, what, what influencers, like who's, who's in alignment um, with your shop? And then I want you to tell me what you actually sell. Right. So what we have, so we have something called Wellness Wednesday. And um, that is just an, a, t- a time that we can have like an event and an activation to bring in our customers and our followers on social media and just people in the neighborhood and the community to get together and either host a panel, host a Q&A like we're having with you. Um, we do, you know, like facial massages. We've done um, a full moon kind of like crystal cleansing. We just do all different things. Every Wednesday, something different. Crystals are hot right now. And they are hot right now. And I'm actually so, I have been so anti-crystal, not anti-crystal, but just kind of like, it's just too much of a world that I really don't know about until I met um, my friend. Do you actually know Jamie Graber? Yeah. 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 Jamie, so sure. from Ginger Snaps. Yeah. Now she, you know, host these full moon like cleansings and journaling and everything and she's incredible um so we did a, a an event with her and people literally like it was the evening they laid down on the floor of our street and we have all, all these windows and like people were walking up like like what's happening it looks like a cult like something and then she just kind of like let us set intentions over like the new moon and don't ask me to talk about new moon stuff. I'm still like new, new, but um, it was, I don't know. It was fun. So we always do something new. So that's what we do every Wednesday at our shop. Um, and then what we sell at our shop. So it's Bonbury Bodega. And basically the concept for me was I grew up going to the city. I'm from New Jersey, but I grew up going to the city all my life. I love the convenience culture of New York and how you can go into a shop grab what you need, leave. Like whenever I go abroad, I always miss that kind of like accessibility and easiness of living kind of. Um, But when you go into like a typical New York convenience shop, you know, what do you find? You find like crap and there's not necessarily garbage. garbage. And I am the girl who will buy fruit at a bodega, like happily. I think they have the best fruit. It may not be organic, but you know, like props to like my career. I'm half Korean. So like I feel like Koreans know fruit so well and everything is so ripe and delicious. And again, like probably not organic, but I'm okay with that. Um, I just love like the mix and hodgepodge of a New York City bodega. But by the way, a lot of listeners are in Europe. We get a lot of people in Europe and not in outside of New York. So yeah. a bodega is, is it's yeah. like a, a corner market. It's a corner store. Yeah. yeah. And and um, a lot of the corner stores in New York are... Um, they're either Hispanic run or they're Korean run. So for me, I just love the idea of like immigrant culture coming into this country and city and thriving um, by providing like the essentials to New Yorkers. And for me, I'm like, what? why can't we also provide essentials that I'm gonna use day in, day out and that I'm not gonna feel guilty about like serving to my kids or using for my kids or myself. Um, I did not grow up as like, I did not grow up with like a macrobiotic mother. I did not. I was in a hippie. I was very much um, raised in like commercial mainstream America. Regular New Jersey. Yeah, exactly. Um, But as I grew up and as I got exposed to more of this cleansing life, the more I think, and we were talking about this with the air fresheners, I feel like the more sensitized you are with the products that you're using, not just what you're eating. For me, it started with eating and juicing and then it started like kind of permeating all the other areas of my life, particularly when I had kids. So I wanted a shop that could just like be easy and accessible. You could find you can find your laundry detergent. You could find your you can find a salad. You can get a juice. Just like easy, and you don't have to think about it. You know, someone vetted everything beforehand. You know, it's easy. You know, it's clean. You know, it's non toxic. Um, I, I created a store kind of for myself, you know, um, it's a wellness bodega, a well curated wellness well, yeah, bodega. Yeah. 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 I mean, the word wellness has gotten to be so like inflated these days that I'm like, I kind of like, I'm like scared of the word wellness, but yeah, what I really like is that I feel like wellness, I mean, this is more of a bigger conversation, but I feel like wellness has become kind of aspirational and has gotten, um, a bad rap for being like hocus pocusy or we were just talking about the crystals and everything. Right. It's like. If, if you hear the word wellness, you think, you know, Gwyneth Paltrow, oh, like this or that. It, it can be easy, approachable, friendly, not crazy. Um, we don't carry like um, adaptogens at my store. We don't have like all these powders and, and things like that because we just carry good, clean food, juices and products that you can read the like ingredients. You know what it is and it's not going to make you sick. Um, so that's the concept of Bunbury Bodega. Yeah, so the 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 
concept of wellness or like the culture of wellness is very different than the application. The yes. application is just like, stop buying poisonous Correct. shit, use essential oils, not because they're like these yep. weird ethereal things, but because they smell good and they're better than all the nasty things that we spray yes. in our house, like those yeah. air fresheners. I did a rant last night on Instagram. <laughs> I know, I saw. That's what you were talking about. But then about. I went yeah. into the Uber and it was it was so funny because there was literally like trees hanging from every like corner. That was, You sent me a <laughs> picture. On, that was... That was a lot of fake trees. But it was funny because I was going like this, and then all of a sudden it like, like hit me in my face, and I was like, they're just, they were everywhere. It was so funny. I had to share. Yeah. That is, I've always been fascinated by that, like, like in Fabuloso. So when we opened the studio, the, the building used Fabuloso. To I don't like, even know what that is. Oh, Fabuloso. I don't know where it comes from. How, uh, it's, it's this, it's these buckets of like blue liquid and oh. green liquid and yeah. all these different colors, and they have this intense, cheap 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 yeah. fake aroma and they use it to like i think because it's so strong it's almost like uh, a perfume ammonia. yeah and they use it to clean buildings yeah but it doesn't do anything sure. to elevate any experience for anybody right. except make you think that you're in a prison or an institution yeah. like yeah, it's yeah, the yeah, worst yeah. yeah and they use it here and it was just like the bane of my daily experience <laughs> totally. like i'd come in here and the place would be a mess construction yeah. loud you know we're building it out and then there'd be some guy walking, pushing Fabulosa down the hallway. And I'm like, Ugh. could you just not kill me for like 20 minutes in one day? And it's really hard because we were renovating our home when um, I got pregnant for the first time. And um, it was just like my husband and I were just like kind of just going back and forth. And just like, you can't use this. You can't use this. They were putting up drywall. I'm like, ah. And it's like, it's so hard because we live, or at least I live now, in an urban world you know in Where, urban where's your home in the west village west village yeah one of the most beautiful neighborhoods in new york city yeah i yeah. love it legendary iconic neighborhood beautiful yeah. yeah yeah and um and i love the city i love the, like i like i was just talking about like i i'm a city person like i love going to the country but you know i i thrive in a city environment so it is this kind of dichotomy of like living a cleansing life in a modern urban world and so where do you draw the line? Where, where, what can you, where can you control? And how much are you becoming kind of, um, I don't know. Uh, making yourself crazy. Yeah, kind of thing? Making right. your, exactly. Like for instance, like my, my husband is, is an amazing person, but he went to Costco and thinking he did a, like a really good thing, came home with like, like buckets of like detergent, you know? And, and it was like, free and clear or something you know what I mean not like the most heinous thing but still like heinous and I literally had like a meltdown and afterwards I was like okay maybe that was a little too much you know what I mean like I, I, the, the level of like emotions that I had over this like this physical like thing made me kind of look at myself kind of like separated myself it's like maybe that was a little overboard and maybe we should and he was just trying to do a nice thing like saving us a buck, you know what I mean? So it's tough. I don't know. It's it's really hard. It's I kind of wanted to talk to you about that yeah. because like you, there's this interest, especially living in New York, like mm -hmm. <clears throat> when you're super aware of all the bad decisions that we make collectively as a culture. Yeah. Like, and like, by the way, as I, that I've made as since I was a child, not knowing any better, you know, so I'm certainly not like mother earth you know I, I so I have probably a lot of guilt it might that might have been what it was like you know like my I was projecting my guilt of using stuff like that for so many years you know well there's an awareness you suddenly come to like mm -hmm. we all started off eating garbage spraying garbage all over the place doing yeah. like I used to spray bug killer on ants and yeah. like just ridiculous collapsed consciousness behavior totally. and then you have the awareness and you go oh shit like mm -hmm. and then it, it, you have to watch yourself from yeah. becoming obsessive and crazy totally you know, Dr. Vichy told me something really interesting once. He said, uh, you know, he thinks in biblical terms, he's very religious. Mm. And he said, you know, it's a fallen world. Mm. He's like, it's supposed to be that way. Mm. This is where we come to like, he didn't use these words, but this is where we come to fuck up. Yeah. And then, you know, we learn from it and yeah. then we move on because he's very spiritual. He thinks this way. So, uh, and it makes a lot of sense to me. Like it's like never, that. like we're not going to make a paradise on earth. Definitely right. not at this point. Right. Um, I wanted to build out the <laughs> studio, like the, the, 
construction is such a toxic thing. Yeah. Cutting drywall, insulation, fibers, using yeah. things that I, I didn't even want to come in the studio when they were doing and the floors. And unless you're it's building a, like a log cabin, <laughs> like I don't know what how you can avoid it. you can eco-build a business in New York, sure. but like you need an extra million to get like That's to right. reclaim everything yep. and the, all of that. It's like... So for, yeah, so for us when we were doing our, our home, there were certain things like that I knew I could control, you know, and do, find, trying to find like reclaimed wood for our floors but then you know we still had drywall you know or this that kind of thing you know we still have it like a air conditioning unit which is probably like super not great for our like you know skin and and respiratory but i'm like also an ac person so that's kind of like what person air conditioning oh so that's kind of like one of the uh, new york you need it you need you do need it but it's also it's hot and humid but it's like not you know, one could very much argue that that's toxic. You know what I mean? So. Well, in New York, that humidity carries yeah. with it a lot of particulate. Mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It gets a little gross yeah. until it rains, until it finally rains. Yeah. Right. Right. So, so I don't know. It's always, it, it's, I think it's really interesting in li- the when you're living in, like you said, like a fallen world, it's like how you have to be mindful of like what, works for you and and if you're not quite there yet in certain other places and I think just being really easy with yourself and like forgiving with with where you are at that moment and that can apply to your diet that can apply to your self-care regime that can apply to the way you know what products you use it's just kind of I, I think that that there's been become such an intense um spec like judgment on on and focus on what we do you know that that either that's toxic to ourselves and to the to the environment that we've become almost it's just it's it's almost like too high of a of a barometer you know and we get and then we we either people get scared and run in the other dire- direction or they just be it's just like this this culture of being like so judgy about everything and I'm trying to like I think everything that I do on my website and on social media and in our store is trying to like make things a little easier and less judgy and open for everyone you know it's just it's just here's what, here's something that you can do. If you don't like it, that's fine. Like, you know, there's other spaces for you. So I just feel like wellness has become this thing that's, that's like so aspirational. It's too, it's just almost like in, in unattainable. People learn and uh, uh, they are influenced by modeling, mm-hmm. meaning like they model people they think are cool. Mm-hmm. So if you're just like cool as shit, and other people are like, I want to do that. <laughs> That's why it's cool that Leonardo DiCaprio cares about the environment. So we have to do it. And people are like, oh, I like him. Either he's cute or a good actor or I think he's a celebrity. So yeah. That's cool. You yeah. know? Yeah. So it's it's better than preaching, you yeah. know? Way better. Just to be yeah. like, I'm into this. And then people go, well, that must be dope. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah. I think it's really important for, for anyone on social media to be mindful of the shoulds. Like, or... Or the use. So whenever I like say something, like this is what I do, and sometimes I'll just say like, "Oh, when you da 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 da," and I'm like, "Delete, delete, delete, delete." I'm like, "No, no, no like when I do this, because right. this is what I'm doing." And then if someone like that speaks to you, great. But like, because I've found that people that I follow, like you know, more and more, it's like the you should eat this or you should do that. Don't do this. Don't do that. And I'm like, no, like you know, like. Each, like, there's certain, maybe there are certain things that not, as a collective we should be doing, but I start, try to steer away from that language. What was your first level of awareness? Like, what was the first thing? Like, where did you go? Like, oh, wait, like, this, like, the first time you thought about construction materials being toxic or oh, a yeah. food thing, or like, when did you recognize that, like, there was something that, that was better than what we were doing? Was I it think, before the colonic? No. Oh, so. I think my sense it, I like I think my barometer of like what was like good for me and not good for me was so muted from all the like toxicity building up over the years. I mean, I um until I met Gil and started to like strip away those layers, you know? And as I started to strip away those layers is when my I guess acuity to um other things, environmental things happen, but the environmental things honestly happen like last, like the, I, I, I didn't, I only recently, like, I think it was only like a year and a half ago that I like looked at my like makeup stuff and just threw everything out because I was like, why, why is this even in my bathroom? You know? Um, 
it started with the food and the cleansing and the colonics. So you got a referral from what, a girlfriend or something? Hey, you got to try a colonic? Like what ended you up in a colonic no. room? Um, I always grew up, I was like a very much extreme person. Like I was like a drug addict when I was in high school. I How deep of a drug addict are we talking? Like uh, were you a pothead or were you like? I was like a cokehead. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah. I was very like New York. Typical. I was like sneaking out of my like tech class to like either blow lines or like do like K. Like it was it was intense. Yeah, it was it was like a fast experience. You know, like childhood. Like it was just that type of environment. Um, but luckily, I like hit bottom before I even like went to college, you know? And then I, I realized that that was like not the path. And, and luckily I stopped that very quickly because I was really, really like on a, headed on a bad path. So wait, what, what was, how'd you hit bottom? You get arrested? Um, well, yeah, that wasn't, but that, I don't think that was my bottom. Um, I think it was just, you know, like physically, like I, I literally, be, I started to like, like hallucinate. I was just like, I was just in a really negative space that was like not safe for myself. You so know? you were deep in the drugs. Yeah. Like really deep into yes. the party drugs. Yes. Okay. And, um, and I mean, I loved it. I was like very, like I said, I was very extreme. Like I would be like really into that, but then really great at school, you know, and going back and forth and toggling back and forth. But finally, when I like physically couldn't do the drugs anymore, I stopped. Um, and then, but that extremist kind of um, compulsion didn't go away. I didn't know how to heal myself of that. So that transferred into an eating disorder. So then in college, I, I was like basically bulimic. I was vegan, but I would like binge on all these like vegan like bullshit, like stuff that they, is not even like real food, you know? Right, right. Um, and then that sort of thing and happening. And um, then when I started working in New York, I was working at like a fashion magazine and I was surrounded by these women and we're like talking about wellness. Wellness had not been like a coined phrase yet, but we are trying to show women like what you should wear and what you should eat and what you do. Meanwhile, everyone, all these women were themselves so fucked up you know like I they were dieting they were smoking they were, like these women were not happy and so I was like there's something missing I just was not happy you know I was functioning but I was just not in a great space you know and I remember being at Whole Foods and I was looking at like the cookbook section for whatever reason and I saw this big book with like bright tomatoes and it was the raw food detox diet by Natalia's Natalia's book yeah so for some reason that cover spoke to me and I like picked it up and I started reading it in the store and I was like, this kind of looks interesting to me, you know, and the raw, the raw food world was kind of familiar to me, but I just, I don't know what made me read it, but I read it. I devoured it. I was obsessed with it. I looked in the back and she said she was in New York. She still takes private clients. I emailed her. We made an appointment. I met her at her apartment and we met and like, we just, she just went over the whole thing. And I was, and I was so game for it. I just like absorbed it. And I remember she said to me at the end, she's like, you know what? I think you're getting this. I think you're going to do this for the rest of your life. And I was like, maybe, maybe. And of course, in the book, she credits Gil Jacobs throughout, you know? And I'm like, well, I'm in New York. I might as well make an appointment with him. So I made an appointment with him. And that was my first experience. The Raw Detox Diet, that yes. book is the gateway drug for, <laughs> for all New York women to colonics. Yeah. You know, whether... <laughs> Isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So... Uh, um, so that was my my first experience, but I have but it's really important to say that simultaneously I was doing a lot of work spiritually to heal the I guess emotional imbalance that I had when it when it came to like extremism, addiction and all of that stuff. Um so I worked um with um this woman Gabrielle Bernstein who was um, also doing, she was like kind of like my mentor and like life coach, I guess, if you will. But then she became a really close friend. Um, so I feel like all of these people were just starting out in their apartments and they're like little shitty apartments. And now they're like these massive, you know, have these massive followings, which is awesome. But I was very lucky to have these experiences with with these amazing people. So I was reading a lot of Marianne Williamson and A Course in, Mi- a Course in Miracles and Thich Nhat Hanh and um, Eckhart Tolle. And I was just, I wanted a deep, deep dive spiritually and also physically at the same time. So for me, the two of those things could not exist separately. Um, I get a lot of questions or comments that they're like, how, um, like, um, what's the term when you're the, it's not an orthorexia. Oh God. The orthorexic. Term. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, so I like, Oh, you're author orthorexic or you're, you know, how is this not another compulsion, this type of lifestyle? And, and 
it, it's one of my most exciting topics to talk about because I've done so much work to make sure that that is, it's not a compulsion. I think that it's very, that it, it is easy if you don't do the work to look at the raw food detox diet and make it this thing, you know, and be very like dogmatic about it. So when you pair, so, so I wrote, I wrote a digital course online. I do have like these lean programs and whatever. But for me, my favorite thing that I like ebook that I have on my website is the body love course, which is all about tapping into your intuition and then intuitively applying this life into your, I just every day, because I think what Gil is amazing at and what a lot of these amazing raw food detox cleansers do, they, they talk about the pragmatic stuff. They don't necessarily, even Natalia, there's not enough conversation about like self-love and how you apply that. How do you not just translate this into another kind of like eating disorder, which I don't think it is by any means, but I think there, there should be more conversation about being, being a little easier with yourself. And so that's what a lot of my recipes and, and content and posts are about is, is how does someone like me who came, who was a former addict, who was a former bulimic, who was, you know, like literally just like on the verge of like, who knows, live into this life, you know, how did, and how do I, and I don't even look back. I don't have like even moments or glimpses of what my life was back then. And how did I heal myself? I feel like a lot of women may not have been as extreme as I was, but still have grapple with this body imagery, um, you know, controlling compulsion, like dieting, that sort of thing. And they look at this world of wellness and that's why wellness is so, I feel like dangerous in a way right now, because it's like they're just going to jump all in, you know, without doing like the proper emotional work with it. So for me, like that's where I feel like I come in where it's like you, Fred, Gil are so amazing. They're providing all this information. But it's like for the girl who's like has all this shit, like where's the emotional aspect in this and where's the kindness and where's the like, OK, ease into this. So this does become a lifestyle and not you know, another it, it, compulsion, it, you know, you drive it and it doesn't drive you. That's the big that's thing. That's right. Yeah. I, that's how I work with women come in and they'll start talking about like, you know, do you think my knees look fatter? Mm. Than, and I go, I'm not the person that's going to help you wage a <laughs> war against your body. I was like, that's not what we do here. Yeah. I was like, we have fun. We talk about fun food. We talk yeah. about how good we feel after a colonic. We do the work mm -hmm. and that's it. And we don't measure kneecaps and we don't measure like that. Yeah. No, 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 no. We yeah. don't have a, they're always like, do you have a scale here? No. Yeah. We don't have a fucking scale. Here. Right, right, right. We don't need to obsess over a number. Like, totally. Definitely don't do that. And also just like have food, like food is, so, I mean, for men and women alike, but food is such an emotional thing for women I feel like they want the comfort not in a negative way like you know like emotional eating sure you know what I mean that's not you know we don't want to emotionally eat but we can't dissect emotions and experience from food I mean you worked in food I mean there's something there's joy in food there is indulgence there's definitely like this amazing experience to be have with food that's separate from just nourishing us physically and so for me diving into this cleansing life is like, has been life changing and I, and I wouldn't go back, but I was not going to sacrifice my love and just joy of food and cooking. And, and so how do we cook and, and still indulge, um, and, and feed our friends and feed our family and feed ourselves in fun, delicious ways yet still live in this cleansing life. And when I married the two, I was just like, well, like this is like the best way to live. I watch, I watch your Insta stories all the time. Yeah. And I, and I just like, and, and it's just like, for me, I found the Holy Grail for myself. So like, that's why I was just like, I want to just share this with people. And if, if people are into it, great. If again, like if not, then fine. And you started that with a blog. Mm -hmm. That's how you started, right? Mm -hmm. You started a blog and where did the uh, bodega come from? Um, it's the bodega. Well, it's going to be a year in like in the end of September. So congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it, it was initially a blog. Then we kind of like moved to Instagram and that was really where we like gained our following and, and a lot of our recipes live on Instagram. And yeah, this just opportunity came up to open a pop-up. Basically they they were trying to revitalize Bleecker street. Bleecker street is downtown in New York and it's a storied historical street, but it's been vacant. Really? Bleecker Street needs to, needed to be revitalized? Oh my God. If you've been down, because I live in the neighborhood and it's just shuttered storefront after shuttered storefront. Really? Yeah. And it, it was just kind of a, a graveyard. And so this big real estate kind of behemoth came in, 
partnered with a kind of a cooler. Who was it? Do you know the the management? Brookfield? Oh, okay. They have that massive uh, mall downtown, and they have they're they're massive. Um, but they were had the insight enough, like to their credit, to like partner with a, this like cooler cultural. I don't know, content firm. I don't know what you call this company, but I don't even know what they do, but they do things. They do cool things. And um, that company sought out different brands to like fill in, you know, who would never have the opportunity to afford a a rent on Bleecker Street. That's what I mean. From what I, the I mean, I don't, I work all the time. I don't go out ever. So, but when I used to go to Bleecker Street, it was still happening. Yeah. There was stuff going on down there. Definitely not happening. It was just like dead, like crickets. Um, So they found like seven brands, um, like a, a fashion designer, like this menswear thing. And they were looking for, I guess, like a wellness component. And one of the, what's funny is one of the, like um, the, executives at Brookfield, um, you know, it's the most corporate like suit and tie place ever. But this woman who's like kind of a youngish woman, she, but she was like a marketing executive, followed Bonbury and like suggested. Your blog. Yeah. And suggested it yeah. to you. Yeah. Yeah. Pitched us or, or, or a friend, actually, no, no, a friend had suggested me and the marketing executive already was a follower. was like, yes. So, which was insane. And so when they came to me and this is what, so I had my second child my daughter she was three weeks old and my friend came up to me was like can you come to Bleecker Street in like 10 minutes and I was like sure like just to meet her and I came her and she's like so what do you think like do you want to go into this store like in September and it was I think it was like July late July and I'm like uh uh and she's like say yes I was like okay yes and I literally came home to my husband I was like fuck we need to open a store in a month and um, my husband is like literally amazing. He's he he built our home. Like he he's just he and he just dived in and literally like built our the store out in a month. I like dove into getting my food prep license, like finding a commercial kitchen, finding a cook to help me. And then the the next three months of my life were the craziest thing ever. Well, you know, everybody asks too. They're like. Because, you know, I thought that we all, we all think the rent must be enormous. So yeah. I didn't realize what happened. And everybody yeah. goes, how many fucking salad dressings can she sell yeah. to be there? Like, yeah. it's a, but, No, no. So, so it's a pop, technically it's a pop-up. So we, I mean, knock on wood, we were only supposed to be there for six months. We extended another six months and we just extended another six months. So we'll be a year and a half. And so, um, I mean, we still pay rent. I mean, I'm not going to talk about what the right. rent is, but right. it's certainly, it, it basically enabled us a small like nothing, I didn't have a business, you know, before just to start. So I'm so grateful for that, you know? And so they're, they're trying to create a culture there of coolness to attract more businesses. Correct. And then they're giving you shorter leases yeah. so that you get the opportunity to be in the neighborhood. And yeah. And up. that's and then, very common right now throughout New York because, because of the, 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 there's, there's no, there's so many empty storefronts. And I think landlords are starting to see that it's, it's not good for the city to have empty spaces. It's good to start, have vibrant, you know, not all of them are doing that. And now I'm looking for a real lease and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm figuring it out, but I feel really, um, you know, positive, you know, and optimistic that I can find a space that really works for us. They did that here. They didn't give us any break on the rent, but yeah. uh, that's how we ended up in this building. So we're in the, the uh, fashion district, it's yeah. like it's the fashion and the garment district. Yeah. And I couldn't find a landlord that was going to let me drill 14 holes through their floor and bring yeah. in, you know, 600 pound nitrogen tanks. And then, yeah. and these guys were like, yeah, totally. And then I started talking to people in the building and they were trying to transform this whole area. So they mm. have a radio station upstairs, cool. a record label. Yeah. So when they heard what we did, they were just like, oh, you guys are cool. So yeah, yeah. come destroy our place. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. So you, we need more landlords like that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that was, that was the deal. And, and and so cut to me, like literally being like, not, no, I, I mean, I make, I cook in my kitchen, you know, I, I cook for myself and my family, but to do this, I needed to like get my food prep license, get my food safety license, learn all of those things. We found a commercial kitchen that was like a shared commercial kitchen in Brooklyn. And so I was there until like literally like midnight every day cooking, you know, and then like pumping on the car ride, you know, cause I was still nursing my baby. And then my, my husband would come the next day with the car to bring the food to the thing. And it was just like this crazy, it was just, we made it work. You know what I mean? And Mega hustle. 
mega hustle. A lot of yeah. hunger to make that work. And I remember just thinking every day, it's like, you know that I'm one day I'm going to look back and like, remember this time? Remember this time? But it just like, kept happening. I'm like, when am I going to get to the point of like, remember this time? I think I'm kind of there. Let's go back to your spiritual life. Yeah. Because that's what kind of led you into all this. I mean, mm -hmm. people don't like, you know, even for me with this business, like I don't, it's an insane business. It's not no, nothing that both of us do mm -hmm. uh, or probably and a lot of our colleagues and other shop owners and colonic therapists and wellness studios. Uh, it's not anything that we do as a business idea like, oh, we're going to get rich doing this like yeah. other people like start mm -hmm. gas stations and, and convenience stores. Yeah. It's super like, yeah, it has it, it, it's for obviously we get up in the morning because we need to pay our bills too. Sure. Right. But it's not financially motivated or created. Um, and you had talked about like, you know, the integration of spirituality versus the cleansing life. Mm -hmm. And uh, what are your spiritual beliefs and, and how does that tie into everything that you do? Well, I was raised Jewish, um, even though like my mom is Korean Catholic and my dad was like Jewish from the Bronx, but I was raised Jewish. So for me, um, I was always I enjoyed going to like temple and, and, and I enjoy the um, like for me, I actually, if there's any sort of organized religion, I definitely speak to Judaism because there's a relationship directly to a higher power. Not There's not any like middlemen, you know, and it's it's um, so for me, a higher power and tradition is a really big thing for me. I always grew up um, with that being a very big part. Like we celebrated Shabbat every Friday and it was just a big part of me, my growing up. Um, but as I grew older, you know, I started, we talked about like, I lost my dad when I was 20. So I was very much, um, I was introduced immediately to Tich Nhat Hanh, um, and his book on grief. And for me, that was the first time that I was opened up to the, uh, a, an alternative kind of spirituality and what did that mean and meditation and, um, Buddhism and mindfulness and all of those concepts. And so that was when I was like 20, 21. And since then, I just, for me, meditation is just like a, it's the way that I'm able to operate every single day. I, I do meditate every what, single day. What do you morning. do? What kind of meditation? I just breathe. I don't, I don't do like TM. I don't do anything. I just do mindful breathing. And sometimes I'll listen to a guided meditation. But for me, um, I think it going back to my, um, like former addicts, you know, tendencies, like, I need to like feel my anxiety and, ex and experience. Like for me, that was all about running away, you know? So for me, it's the opposite. Every single morning I sit and I breathe in the anxiety. I breathe in the feelings. I breathe in any sort of thing. And I just do that. And that's just, that's what I do. There's no like, like I don't have an app. I don't do anything like that. I just like, I just, and that's so helpful. And then I'll set an intention for the day. Um, and that's what I do in the morning. And that's my spirit spirituality. I don't know how to like ex explain it more than that, but then I, you know, I love readings from the Dalai Lama. Again, Thich Nhat Hanh is a particular, um, particular person that I really like, that really speaks to me. Um, a Course in Miracles, those are all, and Gabrielle Bernstein, who kind of like digests A Course in Miracles, that the, those teachings into a more like modern world. Those are all things that guide me every single day. Is that what she does? She does something with A Course in Miracles? Well, is it a she was, her teacher was Marianne Williamson. Okay. She's running for president, or she yes. was? Yeah. So, so everything that they say, it's all about going back to love, self-love, you know, it, it's, it's, I, I don't know where I would be without that teaching, you know, and, and just, and it, again, it's, it's very similar to the cleansing life because it's not like teaching you something. It's just all about removing the blocks from your inner truth, if that makes sense. So we're on this colonic table. You're about like removing the blocks to like thriving normally. Like I saw one of the questions, like what supplements do you take? But we really talk about it's not about supplementing, you know, vitamins and nutrients. It's about uh, removing the blocks so that your body can function well enough to operate without that. I, again, we live in a fallen world. We live in a modern world that sometimes we need some support and, and I'm totally for that. Um, but that's how I view my spirituality. It's about removing the ego, the fear, the blocks so that I can my, my in, intuitive natural self can just thrive. And it's all about, it's very similar to going back to like um, how you would act as a child, you know what I mean? Curiosity, joyfulness, easiness, you know, just 
um, physically and spirituality, spiritually. I I always look at the cleansing life like um, it's a it's a celebration of the spiritual life because Mm -hmm. it's really just decisions. I mean, that's kind of what makes us spiritual beings. It's based on the decisions we make. Mm. And when you have that awareness, it's like when you're buying the organic thing, like it just seems so normal. Mm -hmm. But what we're doing is it's like it it represents this tremendous respect for the earth, Mm -hmm. respect for the body and all of creation, not Mm. to get all lofty and like crazy about it, but like. That's really what it always represented to me. I'm like, when I'm making juice, I'm like, this is a spiritual act. It is. Absolutely. I'm buying the most quality stuff from quality people. And we're, you know, we're respecting the earth. I'm respecting my body. It's just like all good decisions. Mm -hmm. And it's almost like, to me, it's almost like a prayer or something like that. For sure. It's all, it's absolutely all connected. One also thing that helped me with my spirituality is yoga, my yoga practice. When I discovered yoga in, I think it was in college, the more I noticed and, and I don't, do it every single day now, but the more often I do yoga, the more mindful I am specifically about food and about, and seeing the connection between food and the planet and other living beings, you know, animals, that sort of thing. It's for, and that was a very subtle shift I noticed in college, that mindfulness that shifted outside of the yoga studio. So for me, that was a real, I think I st- first started doing Bikram yoga, which was weird um, because that's so, so intense, you know, and like created by like, um, who knows, but, um, but I, know, it's, I know where you were going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, um, but just the practice of being in the room and the discipline and, and just having that over and over again, then shifted into, I think why I became like vegan in college because I, it, it just, it's so crazy how like you, the physical change in your body can change like your mind. Intention and, and yeah. intention. That happened to me. Like I was always a good person, you know, yeah. but I made really bad decisions. I did super fucked up things when I was drinking and doing all my stuff, my yeah. whole history. And when I started eating clean, all of a sudden my like compassion for the, for the aphid on my lettuce was like, <laughs> yeah. so I, I literally will take them outside. Yeah. You know, I don't save every bug, but sure. I save most of them because yeah. it's just this, it, it, it opened up this awareness in me of like compassion and fasting and prayer. They say to do it in just in the Bible. That's like just, well, one there's so much there. fasting in every, religion. every religion. Yeah. Right. And it's like, they say, I think in the Bible it's 50 something times. It's like, well, why did they figure that out? Because they know that when the body's clean, mm-hmm. that it opens up spiritual it's energy. It's crazy. Cause when yeah. you're young, particularly when you're young and Jewish and you have to like fast for, you know, you're like, why am I doing that? You don't understand. You know what I mean? But like, as you get older, even, even as you're an adult, probably many, many like Jew, like conservative Jews probably are like, what the fuck? You know, like, why am I doing this? They don't make that connection. It yeah. is a spiritual. Well, it's also practice. fast. It's also fasting between shitty meals, so you don't feel good. So, like, I'm I grew up Catholic, yeah, and we would there were these days of fasting, and then they would they would told us that it was like for appreciation, sure, which I guess is part of it, but yeah. I would, but that's not really what it was for. I mean, and then they started letting you have fish if you were. Then it was no meat. Then it was fish is okay. And then I asked they I asked in school. I said what. Wait, what happened? Like it was fasting, and now it's like just no meat, and yeah. now it's like well, fish is okay. And I wasn't <laughs> vegan or anything, but yeah. I was so curious. Yeah. And they were like, well, they said some elderly people would pass out in church, and I was right. like, now I know that's because you're fucking toxic. Yeah. Like that's toxicity if you can't right. eat for one evening oh or one goodness. day. It's yeah, like, that's true. Yeah, that's true. I didn't even think about Healthy that. people don't skip meals and, and pass out. <laughs> right. It doesn't even matter how old you are. Yeah. Dr. Vichy is in his night. He's ninety. He still fasts for like you know days at a time. That's like, incredible. Before we started, Nicole said she wanted to check in on her kids. Mm-hmm. So we just took a quick break and we yes. are back. And I'm about to have some of this juice from the bodega. Thank you so much for bringing it today. My pledge. All I had today was a cantaloupe. So I'm, oh, very, good. I'm very happy about this. What are your favorite what? summer fruits? Favorite summer fruits? Definitely melons. Yes. Definitely fresh berries. Mm-hmm. Um, those are probably my two like major ones. Mel- I'm like so big on melons now mm-hmm, me too and yeah where i live in have Oregon, you had korean melons i should have brought them for you korean melons oh, is that just darn. a generic term or is it it's got some it's other not name. no it's it's actually just called korean melon even in korea um there are these yellow mm. kind of gourd like things and they're actually a marriage between like a honeydew and a cucumber so it's like a crunchy honeydew it's my favorite fruit in the world i think i have had these they're actually the yeah they're really i think i have had them yeah love melons they grow melons at the rogue valley growers market where i live in oregon where it's like they don't even know what they are. I go, what kind of melon? Yeah. Like, I don't know, but they, I could smell them as yeah. I walk up to Ugh, the thing. So and I'm good. just like, perfect. So and my good. chickens eat the seeds. It's Ugh. very symbiotic. Yeah, exactly. You're existence. creating a whole thing. 
Uh, let's grab some of these Instagram questions because yeah. I know you got to get going soon. Cool. Um, that, do any of these look interesting to you? Because there's oh, yeah. a couple here that you would just like, nope. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I'll, I'll just go through them. So what are great supplements for our, our kids? So I think um, Floridix is a really good company. So like I, I, I talked about supplements and, and in an ideal world, again, like I, I'm not so crazy about like vitamins, like taking this, taking that, taking this, taking that. But um, I think Floridex is a great plant-based iron supplement. Um, they actually just, or not just, but they have some, another company, another um, version called Kinder Love, which is also a floral-based multivitamin for kids. And they, and they taste, Floridex products taste so good. Are we like, going to say good or bad? Because some people hate it. Like it's like, it's oh, one of I those like it. polarizing it things. It tastes like sweet, yeah. sweet floral blood because yeah. you taste the iron and the concentrated right. herbs. So some people, exactly. I guess it just is a reflection of how clean you are. But um, I, I've been eating weird health food stuff for a long time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I made it New Year's Eve once. This girl got so mad at me. She invited me and some friends over for New Year's. And we were like, let's make New Year's drinks. And none of us drink alcohol, yeah. right? But they were all drinking alcohol. Yeah. So I don't I don't remember exactly what I put together, but I used Floridex. Oh in, my God. <laughs> Floridex in the drink. cocktail. That's insane. That's the coolest thing I've ever heard. Um, we're actually having our one year anniversary. Maybe I should do the, the Floridex yeah, you cocktail. Put, you put, I think store. I did a little Floridex and I put like some orange juice and some like carbonated water or something. Oh my <laughs> gosh. Um, that sounds awful. Sorry. <laughs> um, okay. So, but supplements, um, what things, something that I really rely on though if there's any sort of like stomachy thing is um activated charcoal that's a big one for us um we use something called respigard which is a homeopathic immune booster during the winter and you can find that at um it's called um vita vita health uptown they're like one of the only people who carry it but they carry all like supplements i'm very big on homeopathy for my kids um, I knew nothing about homeopathy before I had my kids, but we have like every remedy under the sun. Um, so that's a big thing that I use for my kids for any sort of thing. Um, so those are supplements for kids. Um, and my favorite green juice currently is, um, kale, celery, ginger, and pineapple. I just love that combo. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, just yes. like always. Um, what type of greens are best for pre-dinner salad for digestion? I mean, I just vary it, you know, for me, like I think all different types of greens, like I love arugula. I love, um, romaine. I love, I, you know, I go in and out of like kale, for salad, I don't know why. Like sometimes I'm just not into that like roughage. Well, sometimes it's like you, it's welcome. Like you're like, yeah. oh, I want like this fibrous. Exactly. But, but sometimes like, it's it's work. Yeah, exactly. It's a lot of work. Like, and, I, and and that's very much going back to like intuition. It's like, what am I craving at that moment? It's never what should I have. So like I literally will like literally will I'll, I'll close my eyes and I'm like, okay, like today I want like a bittery kind of almost like medicinal salad. So then I'll do like arugula, radicchio, that kind of thing, like an Italian chopped salad. Or sometimes I want something really hydrating and I'll use like a lighter Boston lettuce or, or um, romaine, or I'll do organic iceberg. The controversial thing, if I post anything about iceberg, the amount of hate comments I get is off the wall. I love iceberg. I love iceberg too. And I'm listen, we're not having it to like save the world or save ourselves, but it's not doing any harm. You well, know? You, and here's the thing. Yeah. I, you know, all right. So it's good fiber. It's got some enzymes. It does have minimal nutrition, whatever. But like a glass of water has basically nothing in it and we yeah. drink it. So <laughs> like, you know what I mean? I don't know what lobbyist, like the anti-iceberg firm of like, I don't know. People hate, people get very angry about iceberg, but I'll, I'll say it again. Sometimes I'll have iceberg. Come at me for the iceberg. <laughs> Come at uh, me, bro. <laughs> so this person says, can you uh, share your experience with colonics first time? Or someone else wanted to know if you got them. I think we answered that. Yes. But this would be like, I'm always telling people what to expect with colonics. Yeah. But this is my world for 17 years. Sure. As a client, uh -huh. as a as somebody coming in, yeah. what kind of advice would you give to someone for a first time colonic? Like, so your girlfriend comes to you and she goes, I'm going to do this thing. Yeah. What, what, like, what should I do? What do I expect? And like, how do you go, how do you like set her up and go like, no, no, listen, Honestly, this is how I, I, I don't say much. I just say like, keep an open mind. I mean, like, I, again, like the mind and the gut are so connected. I feel like the more fearful you are, the more you're going to like retain, you know, like holds. So I try to say like, go with an open mind. Um, obviously, you know, I, I mean, 
probably fast before your actual colonic. I don't know what the technicalities are for you right now for the first time colonic. Do you, you just usually we, eat plant based for how many days in advance? Well, we I, I try to get everyone to do the Vitality Broom Cleanse okay. because it's just uh, it's not too radical, yeah. but it's a nice departure from all the cooked food. Mm-hmm. And there's still cooked food in it, but it's like it's a very fresh, activating, uh, hydrating plan yeah right so i try to get them to do that Mm -hmm. ideally four to six hours before a session you want to stop eating Mm -hmm. but i always tell everyone like the best time to book colonics are sometime from the morning to like around two Mm o'clock-ish because it would be great if you could just do water tea even coffee if that's your thing Mm -hmm. uh and juice and Mm -hmm. then not and then that's no solid food before the treatment Mm -hmm. it just changes the whole thing yeah it really does yeah but People walk in eating an hour ago and we still get great treatments, yeah. but that's the ideal. Yeah. That's how I tell them to set up. Yeah. So, I mean, for me, like those are the technicalities. And for me, I would just say for just go with an open mind. Don't be scared. And that's it. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Uh, oh, so, so there's a mercury question on here again. Like I'm not a doctor or anything like that, but I, before I got pregnant, got all of my blood work done and and metals tested and what's interesting is that i didn't have high mercury but i had high thallium which if people don't know thallium is like the type of metal like aaron brockovich like found it's like that type of like environmental poisonous metal and i grew up in you know new jersey right across the hudson river so it's not probably a surprise that there's like probably a shitload of stuff being dumped from the city yeah so for people that don't know like so this (laughs) new york city we have Well, it was at one point the largest garbage dump in the world in Staten Island. We had September 11th happen and vaporized buildings and everything in those buildings basically powdered our entire city. Uh, But but Staten Island is part of New York City and like in in New Jersey is right next to Staten Island and right next to uh, Manhattan. It's, you know, it stretches the entire course. And it's all basically the same place, even though it's different uh, parts in different states. Uh, And in New Jersey, we have massive amounts of uh um, industrial uh, pollution i mean just like in newark out. right now this little <clears throat> lead situation in newark yeah. anyway so how i detoxed from that was i went on a pretty serious regimen of juicing i did a lot of cilantro and herbs to help pull out the heavy metals and i did infrared sauna like every single day for like months i was really intense about it and i cleared myself and it and it was it, so if you are quickly detoxed from mercury, I would recommend <laughs> doing like some chlorella. Chlorella is a great, um, great for pulling out metals, like putting cilantro in your juices, which I think is delicious actually. Yeah. And like doing we, a lot of infrared sauna. We have in the Vitality Broom Cleanse a, a metal detox smoothie with cilantro, pineapple, yeah, and chlorella and some other thing. I don't yeah. know what else is in it. I forget, but... Yeah, it's very powerful. Yeah. A lot of our clients do the infrared mm-hmm. uh, and they do the before and afters, even 10 sessions. It's and crazy. That, and that's it. It's, yeah. it's, it's amazing. So I did that. Um, yeah. What else? I think we answered. There's that answers. one on the bottom here. Uh, oh. Let's see what the mask. Is it a good oh. idea to get a colonic while doing a healthy fast? Well, I feel like it's it's necessary, right? Yeah, I should. Probably, I'll probably answer that one. Yeah, I've done a lot of master yeah. cleanse uh, colonics. Mm-hmm. So the question is: Is it a good idea to get a colonic while doing a healthy fast slash cleanse, such as the master cleanse? Mm-hmm. Um, well, here's the thing: If you're water fasting, you can't get colonics at all because it could upset the electrolyte balance and it could actually hurt somebody. So what's the story then with the water? The, isn't there a spa like on the west coast that? They just water fast and do colonics every day. Like we care. Yeah, we care. I don't think they water fast. Oh, they people, don't. Okay, but they, they do. might, and okay. they might do it. But they they're probably giving electrolyte supplements. I don't know because sure. I don't I don't know the deets on it. Yeah. But uh, it could be dangerous to be in the middle of a water fast and do colonics or do um, infrared saunas or anything like that. Mm. Because if you have, you're basically relying on your body's own reserves and if you if if there's nothing coming in yep. and you upset the balance mm. then you can be in trouble so yeah you want to you want to you don't want to put yourself in a um in a state of stress even mm. if it's a, even if it's a um a, a beneficial stress uh, for the body in a normal place so you probably don't want to exercise too hard that's when you want to be resting you don't want to sweat too deeply right um that's now juice fasting is probably what most other people should do because water fasting even though it has tremendous benefit 
it's like, who needs to do that? Somebody that's sick or someone that's so deep in the life that they're already so smart about how to do it. They're not going to make mistakes sure. and they're going to have maybe resources and people around them that they can consult or there's someone that goes to a fasting clinic and that's yeah. they'll take care of my it friend there. says water fasting is big in dubai right now dubai. everyone in dubai is wow. water fasting. yeah i've thought about setting up a colonic studio there you I, should you probably do well yeah but, uh, a lot of water fasters <laughs> so um so juice fasting though is fantastic because it's such a departure from like what we do that mm -hmm. you could, and you could do treatments because you're basically eating. Mm -hmm. You're just doing a better job than your teeth would ever mm -hmm. do. And you're getting fat and protein out, mm -hmm. but you're, de you're getting fruit and vegetable uh, essence. You're getting like exactly right. what we want to extract anyway. Sure. Um, and it helps stimulate movement. People move their bowels. You can get colonics. It's really good. Mm -hmm. The master cleanse is uh, a cleanse that's, I, I don't know why they, Maybe juicers weren't popular when he wrote it. I don't know wh why anybody would want to do that. It's maple syrup, <laughs> lemon juice, and cayenne. I get the point of all of them. Maple syrup is for calories. Uh -huh. Lemon juice is to break up um, uh, um, mucus. Yeah, mucus uh -huh. and waste that's stuck yeah. in the body. And the cayenne is great for circulation and right. opening up the channels a little bit. But to drink that for ten days does not it. It'll, it's a huge departure from what someone does. It's sure. not water fasting. Right. So in a sense, it's cleansing, but the colonics almost always suck. Mm. They almost always suck. We don't, Interesting. Yeah. And when we're cleansing yeah. like that, we want to be get, getting waste out of the body. And that's the whole point. It's the whole point. Right. Yeah. And they almost yeah. always, it's just not. A, that's interesting. It's just not a thing. Um, and we'll grab this last one before we split here. Which supplements and foods before a colonic mm. to maximize impact? Uh, do you have anything that you like to do? Which supplements and foods before a colonic? I mean, uh, again, it's for me, this is like my life now. So it's like, I'm just consistently having lots of raw vegetables, a lot of roughage, you know, um, juicing, you know, and, and like similar to your broom cleanse, I have like the Bunbury green smoothie, which doesn't have any like protein powders or weird things in it. It's just basically a blended salad. And so right. when I, when I emphasize things like that, I, I almost always have a really high quality colonic hydrating foods, you know. That yeah, kind of basically just being consistent, living the life and, and doing it. Yeah. yeah. It's it's the Vitality Broom Cleanse. Mm -hmm. And there's some supplements that I recommend. Like mm -hmm. if you're caked, enzyme supplements are great. They'll mm -hmm. break up shit all along your intestine. What's your favorite enzyme? Uh, AST enzymes. Um, and not even the, just the digestive, but like they, they make really powerful systemic ones. Mm -hmm. And it, like, you know, like your shit turns into oatmeal. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like it oh breaks God. stuff up and carries Whoa, it right crazy. through your body. Helps you digest food. So like this is if you're caked up. Yeah. Um, this is not necessary, but it kind of next levels it. Um, activated charcoal can be really good if someone uh, just has a lot of yuckiness going on. Mm -hmm. If you're like pooping and it's sticking all over the toilet and mm -hmm. you know you got to get a hotel room because you don't want to get divorced kind of thing you know yeah. like like that's the you know you might want to like put some intestinal absorbent in there psyllium and bentonite is only under special circumstances mm -hmm. like don't just do that definitely don't do it if you're backed up but yeah. like some people it's great but like let your therapist work all that out sure um but that's about it really i mean yeah Aside from like putting the right foods in, maybe some enzymes, maybe an intestinal absorbent, but that's it. Yeah. So. Well, Nicole. That was amazing. That thank was you so, so fun. Much. I feel like I could talk for literally more hours. I know. I don't want to keep it too long, but uh, we should do this uh, whenever I'm in town. If Part two. Yeah. yeah. I totally am down. I'm looking forward. Yeah. You know what would be fun? Maybe I can. Well, it's going to be part two tomorrow. Really. I know. It's yeah. I can't wait to go. I, I didn't want to ask you too many questions because I wanted to save it for tomorrow. Uh, but we, I have many now um, brewing. Maybe what I could do, if it's okay, and I don't mm -hmm. know how I would do this, is I'll set up one of my cameras and I it. will uh, mic myself, and then we I can make a podcast out of. Uh, oh my god! Totally out of the Q and A tomorrow night. Let's do it, yeah. and then we're gonna. I think if if we want, we can live it too on Insta Live because so many people are asking. All right, I've never uh, done a live one, but I might. So okay, um, thank you so much yay. for coming. Thank we're you. gonna get out of the <laughs> we're gonna get out of the colonic room right now. Yeah, uh, we're gonna go <laughs> long as I've been in a colonic room without a colonic. Right. <laughs>